on our very first episode, we have two prominent personalities who have reshaped the fashion industry with their remarkable contributions. My first guest is a supermodel and ex-contestant of a reality TV show, Khatron Ke Khiladi, and a ramp walk trainer at her own fashion institute. My second guest is a former Femina Miss India finalist, a Mrs. India winner and a speech coach at her pageant institute. Well, you must have guessed it by now. Please help me welcome the powerhouse duo, the Raut sisters, Anjali and Alicia Raut. Hi, Alicia and Anjali. Like Coco Berry, the institute that you both founded. Anyone who is in the pageant world or has anything to do with pageantry, Coco Berry is synonymous to pageantry. Can you run me through like the birth of Coco Berry, how it all started? <laughs> <laughs> well, she's the mother of the Coco Berry. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the whole idea and everything, the concept came to her. So that her beautifully tell her story. <laughs> So basically, uh, I think Coco Berry was all destined uh, in our destiny, I would say. We never planned to be educators and everybody really asked me why Coco Berry, right? So Coco Berry has a history. It was a very divine calling. I'm a very spiritual person. So Coco Berry actually originated in Singapore as a dance institute. So after marriage, I kind of migrated there and I started this institute known as Coco Berry that did really well. And the story is when I was actually hunting names, a uh, lot of names came into my mind, Bolly Swing, this, that. Some reason Coco Berry stuck to me. And then I went to this Buddha temple chanting that, you know, is this the right name? Because it's like a yogurt fruit kind of a name. It's too fruity. What will people think? How will they be receptive towards the name? And then uh, there was a total up, numerology total up to Coco Berry, C-O-C-O-A. B-E-R-R-Y is 33, C-O-C-O, B-E-R-R-Y is 32, which is okay. a business number. I'm a little into numerology and the existing number is a Venus number. And as soon as I got out of the Buddha temple, I saw bus number 33. And there was no way there was a bus on that route because I've been living in Singapore all my life. And I was absolutely amazed. And then I sat down in the car, I'm telling my husband, you know, do you think it's the right name? And we got down to the parking lot and there were a lot of dogs. And I just, you know, went randomly. What's the name of this dog? He said, Coco. And I got my sign and that's how Coco Berry name came into existence. It gave a lot of luck. It gave a lot of new beginnings to me in a foreign land. And then organically, we started getting students and Coco Berry started in a terrace. Oh. That's how we used to train delegates in a terrace, <laughs> uh, a condominium terrace. And then I said, no, you know, Alicia, I think the universe is guiding us towards something very strong and let's carry forward this name. So this is the history of the name. And uh, this happened for two years. We were, whether it's a rainy day, it's a sunny day, terrace. So we used to go as per the climatical conditions of the day. And uh, then we said, I think it's high time we take the leap of being educators because we have 20 years of experience of being in the industry, being models, being backstage. And I think we need to be responsible enough to impart that knowledge to young aspirants who want to venture into this field. And that's how in 2018, we established our academy full fledged. And then there is no looking back and God's been really kind. And Touch with you doing really well. That's an amazing story. I don't think half of us even knew about that story to begin with. So, what are the different challenges you all faced back, say, in 2018 versus now? How has the trajectory been of Coco Berry? Uh, initially, we were doing one on one, like she would have her batch of students, I would have my batch of students to get them together. Sometimes the portfolio was our task. Yes. So, that's when we sat down and we decided to do a syllabus. Like, these are the fixed dates. And these are the fixed uh, syllabus you have to all do if you want to benefit out of it. So that was the biggest challenge first we faced. And of course, as she said, uh, it was on terrace, so we had to do <laughs> as per climatical conditions. And then when we realized that we can do a lot and give the girls a lot to do, then we decided to take the yeah. studio. So that benefit 
with yes. us the moment we took the studio. So those two years, I think every three months we would have a batch. Yeah. Okay. So we would take two to three months to kind of you know gather a batch mm -hmm. together because obviously there is a cost to everything and Mumbai is a city that has a lot of expenditure. So that was one thing. But I think when we actually sat down and streamlined a module and I think, you know, like the universe makes everything in alignment for you, I think everything just unfolded for the next better place. How wonderful is that? So coming to my next question of you all are sisters. So how is your relationship, you know, growing up, not only as sisters, but now also as business partners? Okay, let me. Okay. So Alicia was extremely unhappy when I was born. Okay, because she was heavily pampered <laughs> for five to six years of her life to a point where my mother would not even give her a pencil because she was so nice and lean that she's think rehne dete hai. Isko pencil bhi nahi pakdate. Isko sirf godi mein pakdate. But I think she did not really welcome me. Would I like? Can I say that? You are <laughs> my heart and soul. So yeah. Yes, but then go for it. eventually, obviously, the bonds come, and we are three together. So people really don't know we have an elder brother, then Alicia, then me. So we're three siblings together. A sandwich. Yeah, <laughs> and she's the middle child. So you know, we are pretty affable. We don't really fight that much. As a ch as children, also, we were very good children. So there was not like we're snatching toys. We play with one toy. So the mother has been really great at imbibing the right values. So we never had those kind of conflicts. She was very possessive when. I I started modeling to an extent that I used to feel choked. That I used to not even share my room with her. And then uh, she had a supermodel friend who said, "Listen, give her space. <laughs> let her evolve and grow." And I think that's where she got a little awakening, and she let loose a little bit. So that was modeling days. We'd do some shows together. We'd walk together. People thought we were twins. You know, we'd walk back to back. So all of those comments come. But it was good fun because I was learning from her. But honestly, I never wanted to get into modeling. Again, modeling <laughs> is not my choice. They actually forced me yeah. into it. It, but I'm glad even my first pageant was actually forced and there was a huge showdown in the house and I said I don't want to do this because <laughs> this is not my calling any which ways like I said everything leads you to the next best place I got my calling and for her also similarly my mom identified modeling for her you know to get her out of her shell and probably be out there oh I was very introverted yes as <laughs> entrepreneurs I think she has her own set of strengths and I have my own st set of strengths so first Elisa would you like to speak about your strengths what do you bring to the table. Okay, the best thing is we know our zones. Yeah. I know what she specializes and what I specialize. So we do not interfere in each right. other's zone. I mean, even if we do, we have a way of saying, you know what, this is you, this is me. If we are not going to be on the same page, this is not going to work. So luckily, we have been yeah. blessed with this understanding. And because she speaks a lot, a lot of people think that she's the elder. When I'm like, dude, I am the elder. Just because she's in communication doesn't so, mean she's the elder. I'm immune to hashtag, are you the elder one? I've become immune to it. My immune system does not respond to the statement anymore. But yes, a lot of uh, cracking of deals I do, a lot of talking part I do, a lot of marketing part I do. So she is like a very... I'm more of a schedule. Yeah, scheduling like person. things to be systematic. Yeah. And if it goes haywire, it triggers me, but I'm learning to control it. So five o'clock for Alicia means five. O'clock. So if it's even five one, you know it's it's a heavy task for us to tell her that <laughs> India me thoda time management open niche hota hai. But uh, to a point that she's so organized that she was having a puja at home and she had an entire PDF with an entire event scheduling <laughs> what time we need to enter. So I said Alicia, you need to take a breather. You can't get that with your personal space. So I'm on a lighter note. I'm telling you. So what I do is, uh, even in terms of creativity, a lot of creative ideas get into me when it comes to shoot production. That's something I feel is a forte, getting garments together, getting concepts together. And of course, I do my communication moduling. She does her ramp moduling. So we bring a lot of our synergies together so that we get the best out. How wonderful And we that? have to discuss. If we are not on the yeah. same page, we don't take it ahead. Right. Yes, that's very important. I think that's the reason why Coco Berry and both of y'all are just standing up so strong and how. So does there ever come a point of time when a student just walks into the academy and automatically you all have an antenna going up which says she is the next Miss India for sure? Yes, we usually have that but uh, if you see our logo, we are we, we are trying to say that we are queen makers and everybody is a queen in its own way and we go by the same, be you worth it. So we wait for the process to finish because at the end everybody's a winner for us. I know you've heard this before, <laughs> but we actually believe in that because we've been on that side and we know if you don't win, the feel of it. So the whole idea is 
everybody involved right so let's wait and watch but definitely yeah i get very strong intuitions and uh, to name a few whether it was suman shweta nandini there's a point where it can be during the class uh, learning process teaching process or during the portfolio process you need know, get that little bit of a mm. uh, gut feeling that yes she is cut off for that particular uh, spot but yes there have been girls who have really surprised us and really worked towards and have really turned the tables for themselves so i think either way it's a win win situation for us absolutely so is there any common mistake that you see most of your students making when they first come into your academy we are there to teach them so that's okay make mistakes otherwise how will they learn how would we learn in the process right. of teaching them uh, but uh, listen hmm. uh, practice create your muscle memory and never have this attitude you need know all hmm. then you will not evolve to the fullest yeah i think it's important for them to not box themselves in one category learn relearn and unlearn because there are a lot of girls they go to a lot of institutes or probably do online grooming self grooming so in the process you need to be very receptive to take in new skills and that's how you will evolve and reach you know the highest potential of your caliber that's one thing you're very particular like as you correctly said even if you're going to a new place to learn something even a contest or a place that's teaching uh Never stop yourself and say it. I know it all. Mm-hmm. You have to give that respect to the one who's also teaching you. Plus, amalgamate both the content. So it's like a job. Yeah. Figure out what you know, what is needed, and give something new to the table. Absolutely, it's always about the learning process and going in. You know, even in okay. pageants with a mindset that okay, I'm here to learn something new and you know yeah. be a better version of myself that I am. So you all have a long-standing equation relationship with TGPC via India's Miss TGPC. So how has that been so far? So it's it's been really uh, I think very interesting because obviously uh, the synergy is the common ground which is to help aspirants reach their ultimate potential. So we have somewhere have a very similar goal and talents come from both end. We try to help them in every possible manner and I think it's been a very affable and a very very a very very positive uh, relationship and we have been very open about you know anything if it bothers us anything that we want to work upon you know we're just a call away so that openness is very very important yeah the transparency is very important and even TGPC has been an epitome to produce girls so i think it's really really nice and you're the person to start the online session <laughs> yes and you've absolutely and it's like i've been covered from there 100% so um you know like i said in the beginning that Coco Berry is synonymous to pageantry. Like there, we have so many Miss Indias today that have come out of Coco Berry. So what is that Midas touch that <laughs> Coco Berry really has? That anything that you, anyone you train, she is a Miss India. Like what is that magic ingredient? Uh, well, the pageant Miss India is on another level, but all the other pageants are also equally important. So, and you, you start. <laughs> <laughs> So, I'll be very honest I think it has lot to also do with the blessings of the almighty like I said I'm very spiritual there is because we do a lot of spiritual work also I'm just talking from an energy point of view there's a lot of divinity and I think there's a lot of guidance that comes through and this is from a very spiritual angle is what I feel but I think it is also the passion that we pour in you know like I remember somebody interviewing us and asking us once you know oh so after a win what do you do we celebrate we order our pizza we have our coke after that the next day we're brainstorming how can we be better so this thought of setting ourselves on this limitless journey to always evolve and get better is what makes us stand out because we keep reworking modules we keep adding creativity we try to be as much as possible in the present moment and give our best and i think that is what makes us stand and, uh, out we are always so, updating ourselves yes uh, more than that as she said we do spirituality there are other the small small mindfulness life coach we do include because you teach them to win but what if it doesn't happen you also need to know how to hold your grounds how to not get demotivated so we we give that motherly touch and the teacher <laughs> touch so yeah so you know the fashion industry is blooming and it's yeah. growing like rapidly in today's time so um do, do you ever feel that bit of competition from other fashion training institutes or trainers for example i think this beautifully yes i think competition is good I think it just keeps you on toes irrespective and I think it's very healthy as well. So like yeah. I said we sit every day and think how do we evolve ourselves okay we do not get 
any kind of constraint from the naysayers around. Of course, we are vigilant. Let's be very honest. It's a competitive market. But at the end of the day, what can we bring to the table needs more energy than what my competitors are doing. Yeah. That is where the energy is. More teachers, <laughs> more students. <laughs> India on the tougher level yeah. than you are. Absolutely. So where do you see yourself um, and Coco Berry going in the next five years? If I have to ask you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so we international Wonderful. is what we are looking at, and by God's grace, we are going to New Jersey in June to train. We went to Cambodia a year back, so we are tapping onto the international market because I think we have the skill sets. Then why not get onto the global platform? And we have One. international delegates also coming to us. Yes, so especially we've seen a trend that people are flying down to India. We had a Denmark and supranational train with us, and to name a few in the recent times. So we feel that let's take it global, get that global experience and that touch to Coco Bay. How wonderful that Coco Berry is finally going global and it gives a lot of opportunities to so many women out there to actually, you know, get that training which they have been craving for, but it couldn't have been a possibility because of the fact that Coco Berry was currently present only in India. So that just opens up a lot of avenues for a lot of different girls. Coming to you, Alicia, if correct me if I'm wrong, you had participated in Look of the Year 1999. <laughs> You've done your homework. <laughs> How did you land there? What made you participate? What is your experience out there? I had no idea what Watling was all about. Being a girl who's 5'10 during my time was like teased. Oh, you're tall, you're abnormal. So I really did not <laughs> think I was beautiful enough. But as she had said it previously, my mom tapped my talent and they just happened to click my picture and send it for a contest. I did not know anything about it. I got selected, you have to go. Being a good girl, okay, ready right, to go. Audition, well, cracked it. I never looked back. That's when I realized my dancing skills and my sports is something that's coming handy in this profession called modeling and that's when slowly I started gaining confidence so I call modeling uh, an institution of realization I could never say no because I could never say no I kept evolving with the new job that kept coming and every time I failed I realized I need to prove myself better and that's how I'm here 25 years still <laughs> modeling I'm still giving the younger generation, <laughs> one to their mind, but absolutely, <laughs> no doubt in that you are a bona fide supermodel. You worked for almost all of the designers out there, most of the runway shows that we have. Any funny or strange incident that still sticks by you? Come on, anyone in this department. <laughs> Calm, khatam. I erase everything because I've always felt ki leave what is bad where it is. Don't bring it with you because then it affects me as a person. Right. I can't think of a funny incident right now. <laughs> it's out of the box right now for me. But if I do in the process of talking, you'll hear, oh, you know what? You asked me this question. Sure. That's the answer. I'm looking forward to that, honestly. Um, you work in the movie fashion. How different was the portrayal of the fashion world in the movie versus how it is in reality? Well, everybody can have a different perception looking at the film. Uh, I won't say it's completely true because the same situation can be handled differently by two different models. So a lot of uh, parents got very worked up the moment they saw the film. So every time we would get an inquiry, does it happen like that? The best thing that our parents told us that nobody puts a gun on your head to do something. Right. And these yeah. are not your principles and moral in life. You don't have to do. Your job is on the runway. You don't have to do anything extra to impress anybody. And that's the principle we still yeah. follow. Finish your work, back home, that's it. That's amazing. How was your experience working on the film? Like it was very different from walking runways for sure. <laughs> well, at that time I had 11 year old, 11 months <laughs> old, old son, Mark. So I was very occupied between motherhood and modeling. Uh, the best thing what I felt was all the models were in the film. So it still felt like mm. you're doing fashion show every day. And the retakes were not happening because we were all professional models. So it was like a cakewalk for us. You know, back then, um, like music videos were extremely, extremely mm. viral in India. And at the height of that, you appeared in a few um, viral music videos. So how was your experience with that? And if you don't mind, if you, could, if you remember one, two hook steps of that, if you can show us. <laughs> okay, I'm a very bad singer, but uh, yes, that changed my profile the moment right. I did the music video. In fact, they were looking out for a look-alike 
Ishita uh, and they wanted a model who looked like Ishita Arun and who could dance. So I happened to audition for one of the commercial which I didn't get selected and that person remembered, oh there's this model, let's audition for her. The moment I walked in, she's the one. I didn't have to audition and from there my journey of music videos and couple of songs for Bollywood films uh, took place, Bollywood and South. And I would really thank because that was one platform which gave a lot of viewership to the models, hmm. which I miss in today's day and age. But yeah. uh, it was an era. And the stage shows that you would do the the respect, the craze. I enjoyed it, but I always I always tell my girls when you are on stage, you're a diva. True. Once you're off, be grounded. You Absolutely. will survive longer. I think being grounded is the key word here because fame and all the glory can just like hit you it's up. Very transient, also. right? The moment you've grounded, everything just centers, you know, itself naturally. Um, coming to a very interesting question for you, Alicia. Why did you not ever participate in a Femina Miss India competition? <laughs> All right, I have a stage phobia when it comes to speaking on mic. And that was one of the things that stopped me from speaking. Mm. Um, and uh, so when I got a call to train in 2007, that time Mark Robinson was the national director. I grabbed the opportunity, I said, Chalo, indirectly, I will feel I'm a part of Miss India. <laughs> and that's when I started working. So the thing is what I realized, whatever I'm scared of, I try to work on it and master. I may not become the best, but at least the fear is gone. And that's how I've evolved after 10 years. <laughs> like this talking is a miracle. <laughs> I don't think any one of us would have even thought that was uh, Alicia back then because what we see out of you now is a very strong, confident woman who knows what she's doing and she's completely out there. In between you ask us what makes us different Yeah. Uh, because we've been on the other side and the difficulty that we have faced because I've faced that part of communication mm. so when we have our students coming if they share a particular situation that bothers mm. them we can relate to them because we've been there ourselves. Right. Yeah. Coming to you Anjali I have done my little bit of homework even in your aspect like correct me if I'm wrong again but you were a part of Channel V's Get yeah. Gorgeous which is <laughs> like at that given point of time yeah. it was as big a hit as say in America's Next Top Model. Yes. So what is the experience there? So yes I got selected for that and it was a complete reality show and I think it really opened me up but I also realized that there's a lot of work that I need to do because I reached till top 5 and I think Iris was the winner of uh, Iris Maithri was the winner of our batch so that whole experience kind of gave me a three dimensional perspective towards me and modeling where I figured out that there is a lot of work that needs to be done I cannot be complacent it's like an ongoing process so it was good because there were a lot of activities that opened me up like we had this um, entire activity that we had to do with a male model and for me you know again I was a little shy quiet kind of a girl and then I had to go there and give like a sexy pose with this opposite gender at the age of 18 19 oh so it was a little bit like uh, overwhelming for me but yes it gave a little bit of a good amount of fame because every time I would go to a modeling <laughs> channel we get gorgeous Anjali you know so it was a nice feeling and then from there onwards I was completely more receptive towards new uh, experiences so I think that opening up happened quite a bit at that platform. So did this exactly prompt you to participate in Feminine Miss India or was it like a childhood dream like it My just dream was? <laughs> <laughs> so I'll be very honest, um, we used to watch Miss World, Miss Universe, you know, sitting together as a family. Never really thought that we would go into glamour because we come from a very conventional background. So my father's an aeronautical engineer, our father is an aeronautical engineer, and you know, we saw very nine to five, simple kind of a humble upbringing. Glamour, fashion, pageants was not a part of our family. But I think eventually what happened is, you know, mom said, just give it a shot. And for me, it took three attempts to be in Miss India. So, you know, every time I would wonder, I'm talking well, you know, I'm walking fine. What is it that is not making it happen? But I think that's the time of your life. And then in 2010, uh, Tanushri Datta was judging and she tells me, oh, I've seen you in the, you know, fashion weeks. I've seen you in the modeling circuit. I said, yes. And that time 23 was the cutoff. 23 years was the cutoff at Miss India and five, eight or no five seven was the height criteria and i'm five eight and i was 23 at that point and i said see this is my last year and i was not even planning to go for the audition because by then i was pretty much established with fashion weeks and i was doing pretty well 
So my mom said, give it a shot. It's your last year. There's no harm. So I packed my bags and I decided to go. And that year I made it without even having any expectation. But when I look back to that particular journey, I feel everybody has a higher calling. You know, it's not about winning or losing. It's when you join the dots backward, you realize why you're doing what you're doing now. Right. And my calling was much higher, you know. So maybe that crown was not meant for me at that particular point but probably grooming girls and leading them in the direction of success in terms of communication is what my higher calling was. So you had worked with Sushmita Sen back then and um, she had you know really come on set and she had kind of comforted everyone before kind of starting yeah. the shoot and that really changed your overall perspective so can you run me through that story? <laughs> How did you all get that aspect? Yeah, right? <laughs> so Okay, so you obviously, you know, Shushmita Sen at that, still today we look up to her as, you know, the Miss Universe that we have had, one of the best universe that we had. And obviously I was starstruck completely. In fact, I was just completely looking at her, mesmerized by her words, her motivation. So I think that experience also instilled why she is where she is, you know. So obviously it was an experience where it completely... Uh, I would just say I was starstruck. To be very honest, I don't remember much from that experience, but I just remember listening to her very carefully because the the kind of guidance she was giving, all the pep talk she was giving, that completely uh, made complete sense at that particular moment for anybody who was a newcomer or wanted to venture ahead and create an indelible mark for herself. So that was my experience with that. <laughs> How sweet. The landscape of pageantry has changed drastically from what it was say back in the 90s to what it is today. What is your take? What is it that you like the pageants back then or the pageants now? Imperfectly perfect. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think imperfectly perfect is the right uh, statement. I think during our times, we didn't have social media as being a very prominent tool. Right. I remember our phones were taken away for the entire day and only given for 10 minutes at night. And that also we used to really crave for that digital connect. So I think right now with social media being so prominent, you have to be on the platform to kind of amplify your voice or your presence well. So that's like a complete revolutionary change that you So you won Mrs. India in mm -hmm. 2018. Correct. So you have had an experience of the Miss pageant and the Mrs. pageant. So how different are these landscapes in total? I think there is a difference, of course, uh, but the main essence remains the same with this beauty with the purpose, your ramp walk, your communication skills. I think what really is different is the criteria. They look at more at what can be taken ahead in terms of your advocacy, what kind of a stronger legacy that you can build. And I think with Mrs. category, there are categories as well, right? We have the MS category, we have the platinum category, we have the gold category. So it's an inclusion of a lot of different age groups, which is not there in the Miss category, right? So I think you encounter batchmates that come from different walks of life with different experiences and different age groups. So that's one very stark difference. And that's why your perspective also changes in the process of the pageantry experience. A Miss category has the limitations of 25 to 26 at the current moment, right? So you only evolve around that age mm -hmm. bracket. So I think uh, when you mingle with different age groups, like I said, different perspectives come forward. So I think this way you build a wider perspective for yourself. Do you think that the Mrs. category in total is getting the attention that it truly deserves that a Miss category, for example, is getting in today's time? Yes, I think uh, after Sargam winning the Mrs. World, uh, it has brought certain things to the limelight, which is good because, you know, in India, we have a certain perspective that after marriage, things kind of slow down right. for you. So that myth is having a complete revolutionary change where women can embark on new journeys. They can have a new defining moment for themselves, even if they're married with kids or have a working professional background. So I think, yes, they are coming into the spotlight uh, slowly and steadily back. And a lot of Mrs. Categories are doing really well in modeling, in web series, because they themselves Self from different walks of life. Right? Sure. The ideas have also changed. Yes. Runways. So mm. that's a good thing. Yes. Yeah. Right. Inclusion so, is like out yeah. there. I think inclusion is the key in the modern pageantry world today. True. Um, you've also had a complete journey from being a contestant to a trainer, which is like coming on the other side of the table and now really training girls to go out there and be contestants themselves. Talk me through like how was the entire shift in roles from being a contestant to a trainer. So obviously there's more responsibility 
and like alicia said since we have been on the other side we understand the emotions these girls go through because honestly this profession is more about rejection than acceptance right every queen's journey is different you might be getting rejected three or four times but what keeps you going is what will determine your final destination right so it's more on the process that you need to focus on not your destination so you have to not limit yourself because once you achieve a particular goal it is limited but when you set yourself on this limitless journey to keep evolving that's where you will find your defining moment so i think this entire role has been very very transformative for me because like i said it adds more responsibility uh, also creating modules that will help tap their inner potential that will lead them uh, tap onto their authenticity because i do a lot of communication work where understanding their life journeys their personal spaces is very important even if you see a lot of pageantry q and a answers they stem from your real life experiences because that is something nobody can plagiarize right and that gives you an edge when you add a storyline because as humans we connect with emotions we connect with a story we love to be good storyteller so it's very important that we stand tall and be that great storyteller inspiring many out there and when it comes to helping the aspirants with rejection and failure it's very simple you just need to get up retrack your steps and just kind of navigate yourself how do i achieve the same goal via a different approach and that different approach becomes your winning story at the end of the day and that is what we keep instilling in them wait for your moment wait for your time how wonderful is that and how well you put it through um so what and how would you define success <laughs> <laughs> okay feel like on your that stage <laughs> to find success at least she asked you once uh, <laughs> for me frankly uh, even if you fail and you're still holding your ground and not having that aggression mm-hmm. or pin pointing fingers i still feel you've become successful in your life right i think success is how you forge your battles whether you win or lose you need to have that fire in the belly see like we said initially a crown a particular designation whether it's a corporate world or any other field is transient you have to go through change change is inevitable but how you forge your battle in those transitions of success and failure is what defines you at the end of the day that is success for me so wonderfully put through i mean um i think all the girls out there really need to like take a note of what you all just put through so now i have a very fun game for both of you all since you all are sisters we are going to play a sister <laughs> tag question so i'm going to okay. ask you a question like for example who wakes up early so if you think anjali wakes up early you point to her or give me a situation i'll give you a situation, give you a situation. then i can not. yeah i'll give you okay. a situation okay. and then you all just have to point it from be yourself or okay. to the other person okay i already we are done this no yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay so the first question is who is stricter at the academy <laughs> <laughs> who spends more money <laughs> <laughs> who is a bigger foodie <laughs> who is more adventurous <laughs> okay we in our wait in our own respective yes. ways we push each other yes who takes more time to get ready no I, okay i take I, my I still go by the uh, modeling i only 2 minutes have to get ready so everything is organized 2 minutes start okay so she's learned she's made me relax <laughs> i think i know the answer of the next one but who is the bigger chatterbox <laughs> how is much who is more funny uh, i can so when i'm training when i'm training so alicia has her uh, mid ground jokes which only family extended friends understand so i think i'll give it up to her because i sometimes take things pretty seriously so when you said you were funny or at the academy what does that exactly mean now what's happening your teachings so of course i come with this all i'm a strict person but strictness is important because it uh, hmm. helps them to focus a little bit of a fear with respect is needed but sometimes they get so serious that i need to break the ice and the concentration still has to be there and they have to survive my 4 to 5 hours of training mm-hmm. so i end up cracking some jokes <laughs> yeah. so i become chandler during that time and then i'm okay done so back to work yeah. so that part okay so we're not done yet coming to the next one who is more messy <laughs> who wins an argument always <laughs> I'm getting more brownie points. Yes, for sure. Share it with me later. <laughs> Who is a student's favorite? I think both. both. It depends. Both. 
Like so Alicia is the stricter one, right? So if there is anything, then they'll come to me because you know I'm the one like a mediator, <laughs> like the calmer version. So even at events, so Alicia like, ये time पे नहीं हुआ है, ये लोग ने ये नहीं किया, वो नहीं किया. Oh, <laughs> I said I'll go. I'll talk to the person. I'll channelize everything for her, and I'll come back. So, students have their fifty-fifty, but more or less, they both. They, everybody adores both of us. How sweet is that? And that brings me to the end of our first segment. And y'all have to hold on to your breath because we are gonna come back in segment two. And trust me, y'all don't wanna miss this. Welcome back to Heels Off with Avanti Shroff, and we are in conversation with the powerhouse duo, the Rout sisters, Alicia and Anjali, and we are back with an absolutely fun game, the rapid fire round. Okay. Brace yourself, ladies. Make sure that the rapid fire round <laughs> is fun, candid, full of fire, and most importantly, rapid. Please, please, please. She's like breathing normally, and I'm going. Okay. You, who who wants to go first? <laughs> hey, so listen. You you, you came. Listen over me so that listening to yeah. her, I don't get worked up. Okay. No, sorry. No, I'm okay. changing my mind. Can I? Okay. Are you ready? Do I have a choice? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> my way. Okay. Or so here is the rapid fire round. Make sure it's as rapid as possible. So the first question is, what do you love more than the gym? More than the gym? Yeah. Oh. Oh my God. <laughs> more than the gym? What do yes. you love? I, I smile. Okay. The best and worst part about being Alicia Rao. Okay. <laughs> Very organized, but works for me. Okay. Three things that nobody knows about. Uh, that I talk a lot. I don't allow the person to talk when I'm talking. Um, I'm funny, and uh, I eat at night <laughs> after sleeping. Okay. So now I'm going to give you a situation. So what if you woke up as the following three people? What would you do first? Okay. The first person is Harina Sandhu. I would uh, relive the moment that she created for India. Sunny Shetty. Sunny. Um, I would dance like her <laughs> because she's an amazing dancer. Your sister Anji. Sister, <laughs> uh, please give me your voice. Give me your thoughts. <laughs> okay. Next question. According to you, out of all your students, who have won? Who has the best walk? Best walk. Uh, Name one. Come on, talk. It's a rapid fire. Fast, fast. Okay. Fast. okay. Sorry, the other ones. I love you all. Okay, so these are situation-based questions. What would you do if a contestant is about to hit the stage and she calls you and tells you that she's had a minor sprain in her leg? What would you do? Breathe in, breathe out. Your muscle memory is strong. Go for it. You do it. Okay. If a contestant tells you that she's not comfortable in the heels that the organizer provided them, it's on your mind. Okay. You know how to walk on your toes. <laughs> go. Believe in yourself. I can see the stricter side. <laughs> Come to the academy. <laughs> If a contestant tells you that she's intimidated by somebody else's walk, put a mirror in front of them. <laughs> you see yourself in them. If a um, if somebody just steals your technique, like another fashion trainer, for example, they can't be me. Right. If somebody claims to be a better ramp walk trainer than you, be happy. <laughs> I'm happy in my own. <laughs> okay, so now you have to choose. Okay, so this and that, dancing or walking the ramp. Walking the ramp. If you're stuck dancing and then, uh, sorry, walking and then dancing in it. Okay. No, instant was dancing. No, instant was walking. Acha, okay. sorry, walking. My bad. <laughs> If you're stuck in an elevator with the snakes from Khatron ke Khiladi, or would you, you did your research? <laughs> <laughs> or would you be a really bitchy pageant girl? Okay. A girl who can't walk but has a nice personality, or an amazing walker with a very dark personality. A uh, good personality and not from the walk because confidence comes with the leader, sir. And that's what you do best. Yes. <laughs> a real girl who most likely spends send, ends up saying something wrong or politically correct contestant. Sorry, Lucky. If you would you choose somebody who always ends up saying yeah. something wrong or a politically correct girl? Sorry, correct. Fashion ten years ago or fashion now? <laughs> <laughs> And that brings us to the end of your rapid fire round. Are you ready? Good, good, good. Good. You did fairly well. 
Listen, I was not staring at you, so now you don't stare at me like strict. But I always stare at you when you're talking. Okay. Because you sound so nice. Okay, now your strictness is making me nervous. No, and when you say I can picturize the movie. Acha, ठीक है, done. And now it's time, Anjali, for you to brace yourself for the rapid fire round. Are you ready? Yes, absolutely. Okay, bring it on. Where would one find Anjali when she's upset? Coffee shop with a cup of <laughs> hot cappuccino. Okay, one personality trait that you would steal from your sister. She's pretty organized. <laughs> okay, three things that are always in your handbag wherever you. Oh, so perfume definitely. I'm very Venus dominant. Uh, definitely my crystals for sure. And secondly, my my card, my credit oh. card. Okay. So I'm gonna give you names. So you need to tell me the first thing that comes to your mind when okay. I say the following names. Okay. First one up, Sunny Shetty. Oh, a diva, complete diva. Abby Castellino. A hustler, I would say. Shweta Sharda. Pataka. <laughs> <laughs> so if you could make, if you could pick a student to make a speech for you and about you, which one would you? Devita Rai, any day. Okay. Okay, so these are situation-based questions. What would you do if a student calls you and tells you that the winner is already fixed? Well, I think it's the narrative in your head that you need to change. So please change okay. the narrative. If a competition like another pageant institute is using your techniques, well, uh, I think then I would give a pat on my back <laughs> and say I'm authentic, and that's where they're drawing inspiration. Yeah. I'm an open vehicle where they're drawing inspiration. So good job, and amazing. <laughs> If a student arrives for a refresher course at the institute, but with a weird American accent, I'll say, "Hey, what happened, girl? Did you go to the US? <laughs> I think you need to rework or rewire your accent a little bit." Right. If a student starts fumbling in her finale answer, well, pick yourself up. That's absolutely organic. It happens, but what matters is what you speak at the end. Right. If a contestant is really keen on an introduction, but you know it is absolutely wrong, well, I'll try to come midways with her. And I'll build up something that has her essence. Too. Okay. Now it's again a this or that question. Okay, so I'm giving okay. you two options, and you need to choose which one okay. you would pick: reality TV or pageantry. Pageantry. Answering questions on stage yourself or listening to your students answer the questions for the way you train them. Both. If you had to pick one. Listening to my girls <laughs> okay. for sure. A girl who can't talk but has a nice personality, or an amazing speaker with a dull personality. No, a personality definitely. A real girl who most likely ends up something ends up saying something wrong on a politically correct girl. Politically correct girl. Fashion ten years ago or now? Ten years ago, <laughs> any day. Okay, and that brings us to the end of your rapid fire too. But the surprise is here. I am not going to choose who won this rapid fire round. Okay. To all the viewers Whoa. out there, we are going to be putting up a vote on the TGPC channel and you all can vote who your winner is. So once they vote, we will be announcing on the TGPC channel who the winner, winner. of this rapid fire round is. So till really then, so please hold on to your breath. Absolutely. See if she wins It comes It's home. as good. It comes home. If I win, it comes home. So we are okay. We'll share it. You're happy as long. As oh yes, happy. absolutely. Okay. I also learned so much. It's okay. <laughs> Always. <laughs> it was so much fun speaking to you all. Thank you so much for coming here, sharing your stories, and being the absolute fun ball both of you all were. Any final words that you all have to say? Message. <laughs> I always know that you never lose your respect. And I, I love this adage that I created. You need to keep the naysayers at bay because in life you'll encounter a lot of naysayers. Just keep your goals in sight. Pay heed to that inner calling that helps you to create the reality that you want to create for yourself. And like I said about my coffee shop, you know, ten years down the line, you will be sipping a cup of coffee. Make sure when you reflect back to your life, there is no regret phase. You want to do pageantry, modeling, give it a shot. It's better to be in an attempt phase, fail, or attempt phase, succeed, than be in a regret phase. So, guys, that is what I believe. In. How well put! Thank you so much once again, and for all of you out there, I'm pretty sure you all can take away a lot of notes from this conversation that we just had with them. Well, this was a wrap <laughs> with the Rout sisters, Alicia and Anjali. But this is just where we have started. There's a lot more fun in the upcoming episodes, so stay tuned and keep watching. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>